is NBC 12 first at four. Right now, Hopewell police searching for a man who they say broke into a woman's home and tried to sexually assault her at knife point. It happened Tuesday night on Danville Street. First at four, Jasmine Turner is speaking to the victim of this crime who says she was determined not to let the intruder overpower her. Now, Jasmine, she must have been scared. What did she do? All right, very disturbing, Jasmine. Thank you for following that for us. First at four, the man already convicted of killing a Virginia State Police Special Agent could face another 10 years in prison. A grand jury handed down a new indictment today against Travis Ball. Last year, he was sentenced to 36 years in the death of Special Agent Michael Walter. Well, now he's also being charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. No court data set on that new federal charge. If he's convicted of that crime, he could get an additional 10 years behind bars. Carla Reddit joins us with what she's learning about this bizarre ordeal. Carla, this is happening in Orlando. It certainly is. It is a 10 out of 10 if you've been outside here in Central Virginia. I definitely agree, a 10. Let's send it over to <laughs> meteorologist Jim Duncan. How long can we expect this gorgeous weather to last? I don't know. Well, turning to Richmond now, where a man is in the hospital with serious injuries after being shot near Fairfield Avenue. Officers showed up here to the North 28th Street area around 11 last night. That's near the Woodville swimming pool. They found that man with a gunshot wound. He was in the back area of that pool. There is no suspect info, but if you know anything, call Crime Stoppers at 804-780-1000. First at four, a damaging blow to Saudi Arabia's oil supply sparks a trip to the kingdom for Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And President Trump is now ordering more sanctions on Iran. Man. That's with a new person in charge of national security. Nadia Romero has the latest on the heightened tensions in the Middle East. <laughs> Next week, the Virginia Beach Police Department will release part of its investigation into the city's deadly mass shooting. Those findings will be released during Tuesday's city council meeting. The shooting you'll remember back in May left 12 people dead and four others wounded. A firm is conducting an independent review of that investigation. A representative will be at the meeting to address where this case stands. There's not a debate about whether these monuments should stay or go. Instead, it centers around what could be during a time of uncertainty. For quite some time now, we've heard from those on both sides of the debate. Part of what we're trying to do is tell the stories, not just because it's history, but because it has an impact today. Now, the latest idea from local leaders, maybe a little context is needed to justify the Confederate monuments that adorn Monument Avenue. The context, whose context, who's narrating this context? That was the question asked at a community conversation Tuesday night here at the Valentine Museum. Does that mean we put up a plaque? Does that mean that we alter something around the monument? What, it, like, what does that actually mean? Insightful perspectives from the public and a panel of experts. We can read these symbols as one thing and they stand for other people as other things. To help gain possible solutions, the Valentine is hosting this art exhibit. Designs created by anonymous artists from all over the nation, chiming in on what Monument Avenue could look like years from now. But they're all in depth and they're all very different, different approaches to ways to add context. And you can have a say on which concept is considered the winning idea. It's all hypothetical, of course, but it could send a symbolic message to those who have the power to decide what change looks like, if at all. It was a really amazing conversation that I wish that was happening in front of our legislators. All right, well, the Valentine will feature that exhibit and the opportunity for you to vote through November. More than 40 universities across the country are competing for <laughs> Feed More, and they could use your help. All right, tonight is the seventh annual Alumni Charity Challenge. It's the University Canned Food Drive, and this year's goal is to collect 150,000 pounds of goods in just three hours. Now, this is a competition. If you'd like to help, bring your canned goods to Hardywood Park Craft Brewery on Own B Lane between 5.30 and 8.30 tonight. Should be fun. All right, first at four, go ahead and check your freezers. Purdue is recalling frozen chicken tenders. And coming up, we'll tell you what you should do if you have them. And holy guacamole, we're on your side with where you can soon pick up specially treated avocados Ooh. that will last twice as long. <laughs> Jim?
And uh, what a beautiful day. Right now, flash flood warnings are in effect for parts of Texas after Imelda made landfall Tuesday as a tropical storm. Forecasters say the Houston area could see the most rainfall it's seen since Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Imelda has weakened into a tropical depression, but officials want people to know that they're not out of the woods. The storm isn't expected to let up for at least a couple of days. And as Imelda moves inland, parts of Louisiana are also expected to feel the effects. Full refund. Yeah, go ahead and get your money back. First at four, social media giants testified on Capitol Hill today in a Senate hearing addressing their role in the spread of hate online. Liz McLaughlin was there and tells us what happened. Doctors at the pediatric unit at the University of North Carolina's hospital can now perform heart surgery again. The UNC cardiology program voluntarily stopped after a New York Times investigation said more patients were dying after having procedures there. A health department investigation found no current deficiencies in that unit, and an outside review board gave the go-ahead for them to continue heart surgeries. All right, Diane, do you like guacamole? Mm -hmm. No? All right, give mm -hmm. me yours. I'll take it. <laughs> There's good news for avocado lovers. Well, this week, Kroger is going to start selling avocados that last longer. All right, Jim, the weather couldn't be any better. You said a 10.5 out of 10, right? I, I said that, yes. I stick to it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we... Signs of fall on the way. Absolutely. I'm glad. I, I love it. <laughs> All right, some new poll numbers are out when it comes to the race for the Democratic nomination. We will tell you which two candidates are in the lead and who's losing traction. But first, pajamas with a purpose? The touching way one woman is helping children fight cancer. That's right after the break. First at four, one <laughs> Tennessee mom is helping kids fight cancer more comfortably. You gotta love this. Anthony Antoine tells us it all started with that mother's own son. Kudos to that mom, by the way. Mm -hmm, absolutely. All right, this is a pretty chilling take on a new reality that parents are pretty familiar with. We will show you the powerful new public service announcement to try and prevent school shootings. Plus, we're on your side if you're thinking about buying or renting a home. We're going to tell you how much you should spend based on your income. And you know what time it is. It's time to check in with the NBC 12 pet cam. All right. Can you see? It? Oh, there it is. I was looking at the big screen. Taking a nap. You know, they checked out the first 30 minutes and left and they're resting. I'm going to go <laughs> join looking. them in a minute, I think. We're back in a moment. <laughs> A Chesterfield couple just became the victims of a potentially deadly prank. Yeah, police ordered them out of their own home in the latest case of what many call swatting. Now, it all stems from information that is publicly available. Enzo Domingo has the on your side alert. Now, Enzo, you spoke with a cybersecurity expert about this. What is that person saying? That's right, guys. Thanks, Enzo. We start your top four at 430 in Hopewell. That's where police are searching for a man who they say broke into a home, then tried to sexually assault the person inside at night point. Yeah, this happened last night on Danville Street, not far from Hopewell High School. So Jasmine Turner is speaking with the victim who fought off the attacker. That's next on Live at 5. Right now, state police investigating after a fiery crash backed up lanes of I-95 in Henrico for several hours this morning. Take a look at that. A dump truck hauling gravel reportedly blew a tire, lost control, and went through a guardrail into the northbound lanes. The driver was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. No charges have been filed. And let's go ahead and take a live look outside. A nearly perfect day in Central Virginia. Lots of sunshine and temperatures hovering in the 70s. We have it really <laughs> lucky here. We certainly do. Nick Russo standing by for an update on our forecast. It's the Sandy Hook Promise, a PSA addressing gun violence in American schools. These new sneakers are just what I need for the new year. I think my own phone to stay in touch with my mom. We're hearing from a mother who lost her child to gun violence and how she helped put this PSA together. Plus, the Democratic race for president is tightening. The gap between the top three candidates closing in. What the latest polls are showing. Many are predicting that this may be a sign of a two-person race. And still ahead, a reminder to be kind. That mm. reminder coming from a viral photo on Facebook. And we want to tell you about a new PSA. It was just released by Sandy Hook Promise. It has to do with gun violence in schools. We're going to hear from one of the moms behind the video and why she says the message just has to be heard. 
Thank you, Rachel. A pod of dolphins found themselves stranded in a Florida canal when the tide went out. Take a look at this one. The dolphins are doing fine now, thankfully, and that's thanks to a human chain that helped guide them back to open waters. The chain was formed to make sounds and vibrations in the water. Together, they were able to get the dolphins back out to the Riviera Bay. Well, it's a post that has been shared thousands of times. A photo of a young girl with autism wrapped up in her blanket as she lies on the floor. But if you look closer, you'll see she's not alone. Kenley Ballou Shaw is accompanied by her school custodian and her best friend, Miss Esther. Kenley's mom says on the day she snapped this photo, Kenley had become overwhelmed at school. But Miss Esther was there to comfort her. Yeah. Miss Esther is shy and she doesn't speak English very well, but all of the students love her. Kenley's mom says they have really built a special bond. All right, a New York teenager and her mother are on a mission to collect Barbie dolls with prosthetic legs so they can donate the dolls to a nearby hospital. Chloe and Cindy Newman got excited about the Barbie when it was released by Mattel about a year ago. Olivia Eugenio shares why that donation is more than just a kind gesture. I Remarkable story. The dolls collected should be delivered to their new home sometime later this week. Diane, I think they're really on to something. This is just good all the way around. It is really interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that report. All right, so Jim disagreed with me. He said it's a 10.5 out of 10 if you describe today. Yes, <laughs> I, I would say 100. Diane? Yeah, not just today. Plenty of good days ahead. Yeah, that's, that's right. a forecast we love to hear. Indeed. Carla Reddit joining us now with what's coming up live at 5. That's right. All right, it's a new reality we've certainly become familiar with lately. Gun violence in American schools. A new public service announcement by Sandy Hook Promise shows a powerful new take. Nicole Hockley lost her son Dylan in the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School, so now she's leading the charge to help make a change. A warning, what you're about to watch may be upsetting. Here's Kate Snow. Thank you for joining us for First at Four, live at five, starts right now.